Hi guys, it's Reagan and welcome back to another video. Today's video is going to be my monthly book haul and this month I have collected quite a few exciting titles to show off. I have some books I picked up from the used bookstore. I have some new exciting releases. So without further ado, let's go ahead and dive right in. The first couple books I'm going to show off are my April book of the month selects this month and I'm so excited to say I am partnering up with them once again for this video. You guys know how much I love book of the month. I work with them very consistently and I always get books from them every single month because I just love their titles and selections. But if you're not familiar, Book of the Month is an online bookish subscription service. Every single month, they curate a list of titles from a variety of different authors and voices in the community, always new releases and always hardcover sent directly to your door. They now also carry audiobooks, which is super cool. And I, of course, have a very special offer code. If you use the code PASTEL, you're able to get your first book for only $5, which is amazing and a great deal for a new hardcover. And word on the street is that The Familiar by Lee Bardugo is an add-on selection for this month. But without further ado, let's go ahead and chat about the two titles I personally picked out this month. So obviously we have to open up the classic blue box and we'll see what's inside. The first title I grabbed is Just for the Summer by Abby Jimenez. I have heard so many fantastic things about this author and her writing. So I saw that she was coming out with a contemporary romance story I wanted to add to my shelf because I have been in a bit of a romance mood lately and who doesn't love a summer rom-com? I definitely do. And the tagline of this book goes, four dates, a kiss, and a breakup. That's all it will take to find their soulmate. We're introduced to our main character, Emma and Emma is cursed. Basically, after every breakup she's had, the boy that she dated finds their soulmate directly after dating her. And after a thread online goes viral, she realizes she's not the only one who has this curse. There's also a guy named Justin who seemingly has the same problem. So they come up with the perfect solution. They'll date each other and the curse will cancel out and then they'll hopefully be able to find their own soulmates once they sort of break up and go their separate ways. But, but what Emma was not expecting is that Justin's actually really cute and hilarious and things get complicated from there. This just sounds playful and fun and I'm hoping romantic and funny. I feel like I'm trying to have a bit of a summer romance marathon at some point this summer. There's also quite a few Emily Henry books I want to read and I feel like these would pair perfectly with each other. The second book I picked out from Book of the Month this month is Dragon Fruit. And this is a romantic fantasy story inspired by Pacific Island mythology and if there's one thing to know about me is that I love anything inspired by folklore especially in a fantasy setting. In this story we're introduced to our main character Hanale and Hanale was once the cherished daughter of a very powerful island family. However though her father does the unimaginable and that is steal a sea dragon egg which results in her getting exiled. Now many years later Hanale has sort of built a life for herself studying and learning more about the creatures of the sea until one day she's offered an opportunity she wasn't expecting. That is the chance to return back from exile and she immediately says yes. Along the way she runs into an old childhood friend named Sam who also needs to find something called a dragon fruit to help his mother. They begin to work with one another and I'm sure something like romance and mystery begins to bloom from there. Again, I think this sounds so interesting. The cover is also completely stunning and I can't wait to check this out, especially because I've been on a bit of a romanticy kick. Alrighty guys, those are my April selects from Book of the Month this month. Again, I'll have a link down below to their site as well as the special offer code to get your first book for only $5. But without further ado, let's go ahead and chat through the rest of the books I picked up. The first book I grabbed, I definitely did not need, but when I saw it at a used bookstore for a good price, I could not say no, and that is Ancillary Justice by Anne Leckie. You might be thinking to yourself, Reagan, you own this book. Yes, I do, but there was recently a cover change, and I actually really like the new covers. I bought the third book in this cover rendition, and the new book by Anne Leckie is also in this style, so I've decided to replace the first two with these versions if I'm able to find them at a good price. So I'm happy to say I now only have one left. But Ancillary Justice is the first book to the Imperial Radix series, which I have been featuring a lot on my channel recently because I'm truly such a huge fan. In this book, we're introduced to our main character, Breck, who was once known as the Justice of Toron. She existed as basically the consciousness for an entire ship. She also existed as things called ancillaries, which were 20 bodies all connected again through the same consciousness. And she existed as the Justice of Torin for thousands of years until we find her at the beginning of this book as a singular individual traversing a really desolate and freezing landscape. And all we know is that Breck is looking for revenge. From there, we jump forward and back in time to learn what exactly happened to Breck to make her now a solo individual and also follow her in the present as she pursues this revenge. There's so many twists and turns within this series. It's also just absolutely captivating. I love the character work and the writing and how the entire thing has ballooned. I've read the first two books and loved both of them so much and I'll be reading the third book soon but I'm so happy 
I added this to my collection. The next book was sent to me from the publisher, so thank you so much to Tor, and that is The Butcher of the Forest by Preeti Muhammad. And this is a short story that sounds rather intense and centers a dark, magical, and dangerous forest. This is a world controlled by a powerful tyrant, and our main character, Varys, is basically forced at the beginning of the story to venture into this dangerous forest to receive the missing children of this said tyrant. Varys is selected for this mission because she's the only one who's actually ventured into this forest and actually survived, and now she has to go back and she only has one day to do so. I feel like this is going to be an intense book. It's very, very short, but I feel like it's also going to be very, very focused. I feel like it's going to have a fairy tale lean, maybe some dark witches, who knows, but I've heard good things. The next book I picked up is Before Your Memory Fades by Toshikazu Kawaguchi. This is the second book to the Before the Coffee Gets Cold series by this author. It's a really interesting mix of like contemporary fiction with a dash of fantasy. The premise is the first book you're introduced to this very strange coffee shop shop, which is a small coffee shop kind of tucked away in the streets of Tokyo. And something unusual exists here. And that is there's one seat within the store that a patron can sit at and actually travel back in time. However, though, there are some very specific and set rules on how this time travel works, um, which are explained within the book itself. And throughout the story, you're reading from three characters who all decide to make this journey for different reasons. And you follow the outcome of that. I imagine the sequel kind of follows that same structure. And I'm excited to be introduced to new characters and new stories. I really appreciated the writing style from this author. It was very quiet but intentional and also emotional without being like over the top. I don't know. It really captured my attention. I read the first book really quickly and I knew I wanted to continue on with this series so I did grab a book too. Next book I grabbed was Commonwealth by Ann Patchett. It's the year of Ann Patchett for me and I finally read one book by her which I did enjoy. I've heard really good things about this particular book and this is actually a new release by her so I'm thrilled to be adding this to my shelf. This to be told through equal measures of humor and heartbreak. This is a story that spans five decades and follows one specific family, but the precipice of kind of the start of the story, a man named Burt Cousins on one Sunday afternoon arrives at Franny's christening party, completely uninvited and everything is turned upside down. And Franny's mother and Burt kiss at this party, resulting in the breakup of both of these individuals' marriages and the resulting domino effect of now two families having to merge together and be one again. Follow the children and cousins within this family, their connections through time in both California and Virginia, and then ultimately Franny in her 20s when she begins to have an affair herself with a famous author who begins to write a book about her family's experience, which kind of creates a reckoning moment for everyone involved. It sounds interesting, and Patchett has a way with character writing. Again, I enjoyed the first book I read of hers, so I was excited to see this and add it to my shelf. All right, next up we have this package here. If I can open it. There we go. Oh yeah, okay. So as you guys may or may not know, I've been a little bit on a romantic kick. So I have been doing a lot of research and buying some new authors, new to me authors, so I can kind of do a deep dive on them. And this series actually came up a lot. I'm not sure if it's going to be for me, but it's kind of like a classic fantasy story that has a lot of politics, but apparently also has a romance that a lot of people love. I wouldn't classify it as romantic, but more like traditional fantasy with romance, but I'm rambling. The book I'm talking about is Kushiel's Dart by Jacqueline Carey. This is a book that's been around for a long time and there are big fans of this and big haters of this series too. It also is kind of a strange setup. And in this story, we're introduced to our main character, Phaedra, and Phaedra has been trained in the arts of espionage and the bedroom. She's basically a courtesan who's also a spy, and she basically has her marks and she learns crucial information from them while also seducing them. At the beginning of this book, she basically finds out information that could absolutely rock the foundations of the empire she lives in, which sort of sets her out on a journey of like honor, love, sacrifice, all of these things. The series came out in 2001, so I feel like it's more like classic fantasy. I'm curious to see how I feel about it myself and I will keep y'all posted. I'll probably definitely do a vlog about this. It's gonna be an interesting time to say the least. The next book I picked up is The Heartless Hunters. This is another enemies to lovers romance leading romanticy story centering a witch and a witch hunter 
falling in love. I mean, tell me more. I'm curious. My interest has been piqued. In this story, we're introduced to our first main character, Rune, and Rune is a witch. And ever since the revolution occurred in her world where the blood of witches ran in the street, she has obviously been lying low and having to hide her magic. To do this, she basically disguises herself as like a vapid uh, socialite, kind of moving through the world and trying to draw the least amount of attention on herself as possible. But at night, though, she moves through the world as the crimson mom a witch vigilante set on saving her kind from being purged by other witch hunters. But after a rescue goes wrong, she decides to throw the scent of witch hunters off her case by courting one of the most notorious witch hunters out there named Gideon, who loathes the decadence and everything that our main character Rune stands for. As we all know, I love enemies to lovers, especially if it's properly drawn out. I feel like this has an interesting setup. It has some strong early reviews, so we shall see. I also picked up the reappearance of Rachel Price by Holly Jackson. This is a YA murder mystery story and there's something about YA murder mystery stories that I just have a blast with. I feel like they tend to be really campy and fun and while intense they're not too scary for me which I also appreciate. In this story we're introduced to our main character Belle who's 18 years old and 16 years prior to the start of this novel the unthinkable happened and that was her mother disappeared without a trace and Belle was the only witness but being two years old she doesn't remember anything and and now her mother has kind of become one of the most notorious and famous cold cases. Belle would like nothing better for people to forget, to stop asking her questions about this, but unfortunately at the beginning of this book her family agreed to sign on to a true crime documentary about uncovering what happened to her mother and something completely unexpected occurs and that is her mother Rachel reappears after all of these years and everything sort of turns upside down from there. Where was she? What happened? Why did she disappear? Belle is looking to uncover all of these questions in this book. I really like Holly Jackson's writing style. This sounds like it will be a fast read an engrossing read and I'm looking forward to reading it soon. Alrighty, next up we have another box and I have no scissors so we're just gonna have to use my brute strength. Oh yes, okay, this is exciting. The next book I have to show off is one of my most anticipated releases and a sequel to a book that I really enjoyed when I read it last year and that is Sunbringer by Hannah Kainer. I have to give a shout out to whoever created the covers to this series because they are truly some of the best, most beautiful fantasy covers out there. I am obsessed and this sequel is amazing. I mean, look at the inside of this book. This is truly incredible. 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10. The first book is called God Killer and it's basically a quest-centered story set in the kingdom of Midrin. Gods here are illegal and outlawed. Basically prior to the start of the series there was a civil war that resulted. At one point gods ruled everything. They basically kept humans in tow. Some of them were kind, many of them were not, and the everyday reality of humanity was very, very difficult because of the gods. So as a response to this, a faction kind of took over the government and vowed to destroy all gods, making any type of worship illegal, which obviously is not the most nuanced approach and made things also very complicated. At the beginning of book one, we're introduced to a variety of characters who are basically going on this secret pilgrimage for different reasons to go to kind of the last remaining god stronghold in this world. Everyone has secrets, things are very complicated, and it's a really sweet found family story, but also an intense story. I liked the writing style a lot. I loved the characters quite a bit. I was very hooked, and so I'm looking forward to checking out book two, because I was a really big fan of book one. So, thrilled. All right, another big box to open. I actually have three books in here. The first two are rather hyped and I feel like I've just been seeing them everywhere and I got curious. The first is Bride by Allie Hazelwood, another romanticy story. And I recently had a thesis where I realized I didn't really like romantic books written with contemporary romance tropes in mind, but this is actually written by a very popular contemporary romance writer, but I don't believe this has a historical setting. It's kind of set more in an urban fantasy landscape, which I think calls out to me and I think could work quite well. This is an enemies to lovers story where there's this fantasy world where like werewolves and vampires exist and they have a very tenuous truce and a way to maintain that truce is like the vampire prime and the head werewolf like have to get married and like that keeps the alliance going strong. There's been a lot of talk about this book online for a variety of reasons from some of the steamy scenes to the writing. It seems like people like it though, right? So I thought it might be interesting to read and review this and let you know my thoughts myself. I might regret this, but I was too curious. So here we are. The next book I picked up was Empire of Silence by Christopher 
Ruccio. This is a sci-fi book that sounds rather intense. I think centering a morally gray main character. Lots of buzz on this one online. Lots of people are a big fan. In it, we're introduced to our main character, Hadrian, and the galaxy remembers him as a hero, the man who burned every last alien from the sky. Also, they remember him as a monster, the devil who destroyed a sun, casually annihilating four billion human lives, even the emperor himself, against empire orders. It says Hadrian was not a hero, he was not a soldier, and he's not a monster. And we follow him on kind of a backwater planet as he's like forced to fight as a gladiator. I think we're like recounting the story of exactly what happened. A man with a big legacy, a man with a lot of stuff on his shoulders but you know what's the truth and what isn't the truth and yeah i don't know this obviously has gotten a lot of buzz recently i love a space opera story and i feel like this might deliver a new voice and a new perspective for me to enjoy you know so I'm excited about this. This book I picked up has been on my list and my radar for a long time. It's loved by many of my favorite fantasy reviewers and that is The Ninth Reign. This is a adventurer's based story, basically an unlikely group of individuals venturing out into the fantasy wilderness to take on monsters, get artifacts for sale. I love a questing setup. I love people who are kind of grumpy, don't get along, come from unlikely places, like forming unlikely camaraderie. And our main character, Tomerlin the Oathless, has no desire to wait around to die while the realm of his ancestors fall to pieces. So when he's offered an invitation from kind of a quirky individual to join her adventuring group, he does, alongside a witch who likes to set things on fire for fun. They set out into the wide world together and quickly get wrapped up in unlikely politics and a big conspiracy. Again, it really has a lot Lot of my favorite like fantasy tropes and setups so I feel like this could be something I really enjoy. I love a ragtag group of individuals getting caught up in things they did not intend to. It's always fun and endearing. Alrighty, we are officially in the home stretch. I only have a few more books to show off. The next one is Nothing to See Here by Kevin Wilson. This is said to be like shocking, funny, weird, but works really, really well. In it, we're following our main characters, Madison and Lillian, who were once very, very close in roommates and boarding school. But after a scandal resulted in Lillian leaving school, they haven't really talked since until 10 years later when Madison reaches out asking if Lillian will help her and become the caretaker to her new twin stepkids, are moving into her house. The reason why Madison needs help is that the two kids spontaneously combust into flames when they're feeling agitated. Lillian decides to take up this very strange job because she honestly needs employment. She's struggling herself and decides to like give herself over to this like one summer. And so begins the story of like an unlikely coming together of characters. And yeah, it sounds weird, like kids combusting into fire. Like, tell me more. Next book I grabbed was The Girls by Emma Klein. I read The Guest by this author last year and really, really liked her writing style. It was intoxicating and fast. I could not put the book down, so obviously I wanted to check out other books by this author. And I actually heard that The Girls was even better than The Guest. And the setting and setup of this sounds really interesting. It's set in the 60s in California and we follow a lonely but eager teenager named Evie and one day Evie's at the park and she sees this kind of cool group of girls who she always sort of dreamed she could be and they get to chatting and she gets pulled in by this group of girls and lo and behold they're also a part of this strange uh, larger group that lives in the wilderness of California and this sort of faraway camp-like place and yes it's actually a cult book. <laughs> And honestly, say no more. Knowing Emma Klein's writing with the context of this being a cult book, I'm already hooked and I want to know what's going to happen. I feel like this is going to be dark, 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 and I can't wait. The last book I have to show off is The Great Believers by Rebecca Mackay. This is said to be a beautiful, harrowing, devastating read. In particular, it's basically the intertwining of two tales, but centering the AIDS crisis. Starting off in the 80s with a young art curator about to pull off the biggest moment in his career, and that is selling off a collection of paintings from the 20s to a gallery. But as his career begins to flourish, the AIDS crisis is also taking a grip on the city he lives in and his life. 30 years later, we also follow our main character, Fiona, who is impaired is trying to track down her estranged daughter. She's staying with her photographer friend who actually documented a large part of the crisis in the 80s in Chicago. And it said, these two intertwining stories take us through the heartbreak of the 80s and the chaos of the modern world as both of our main characters struggle to find goodness amidst disaster. I have heard really good things about this book. It's also a National Book Award nominee. Also one I know is going to be a very emotional read as well. Alrighty guys, those are all the books I've picked up recently. Again, big shout out to this video's sponsor, which is Book of the Month. Again, and if you want to check out their site and get that special offer, I'll have that link down below. But thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you soon with another one soon. Goodbye.